Cuban Democrats in Washington during his administration. So th the point is, is something has to give, and we have to decide whether we want to change things. We as libertarians want to change things. We want limited government. We don't want to go under the same program of saying, yes, we want limited government of the Reagan style, which expands government rapidly and uncontrollably. Well, this is what the, has to stop. But, but don't, don't, don't you recognize that uh, uh, Mr. Reagan has, uh, uh, un under his leadership, certain things have been accomplished which uh, eight years ago would have been inconceivable. If anybody had told me eight years ago we'd have a top tax of 25%, 20%, I'd say that's preposterous. That's a dream land. But, but what did but, the revenues but, do? No, but, but it's, it's, also, it's also true that the entitlements, um, which require a dissolution of structural laws, you know this better than I do, having served, uh, are, are instruments over which Reagan had no effective control. And it's just not fair to say something that was built in to grow at a rate of 7% uh, per year is his responsibility for having created. When he was governor of California, uh, he left uh, California with uh, a balanced budget, having inherited a $5 billion uh, a debt, $500 million debt. Uh, uh, but there was no way in which he could prevent a growth at 10% per year, given immigration, among uh, other factors, uh, and laws that were on the books. Now, what, how could the Libertarian Party undo, say, okay, something for, for, as First, I'd like to address this on, on, on Ronald Reagan. You know, the rates have gone down. We've had four major tax increases. We'll get another one. Revenues went up 50%. Uh, so there's really been uh, no tax reduction at all uh, under Ronald Reagan. What do you mean there's been no tax reduction? In rates. John, rates are all John Jones pays much, was paying at 70%, not pays... 35%. How do you get how do you get revenues up 50 percent from 1980? Because of supply side. Uh, the <laughs> well, if, supplying if, the if, money. The if, people if, keep if, supplying the money for the. If taxes. you want, if you want the exact figures, the top, the richest five percent of the United States is paying now three percent more of total income than it was in uh, eight years ago, notwithstanding that it's a reduction in rate. It's exactly what all yeah. of us have been preaching well, for years. Well, the bottom line is you, revenue. Friedman, Hayek, Mises, me. See, the revenue is the bottom line. Revenues are up, government's up, the size of his administration is up, mm -hmm. and you say it's beyond his control, their entitlements, all this. I don't quite buy that. Well, he wants a constitutional amendment. Uh, uh, why didn't you, you, you people give it to him? Uh, I'm sure you voted for it, but why didn't the other? Oh. Why blame Reagan? when Congress refuses to give him the amendment that he wants. I don't think they'd follow it anyway. They're not going to... If they don't follow the rules now, I mean, uh, they're not going to follow it with another amendment. They ignore the Constitution so many well, other areas. I mean, they've got to follow it, though. Graham Rudman. <laughs> Graham Rudman, for all his insufficiency, is something they had to follow. They had to go into emergency well, session a few weeks ago. Well, they didn't They suspended Graham Rudman and re rewrote no, it. Only that, they part that, it. only that part that was judged unconstitutional. No, but no, there was they didn't follow the figures There was $35 either. billion dollars that they had to reduce. They've, they've redone all the figures on Graham Rudman. They haven't followed the original Graham Rudman. And they can suspend the Graham Rudman any time the, they want. The, the original, of, of course they can. They, they can suspend anything they enact. But the fact is that they haven't, they haven't repealed the law. But they can't suspend a constitutional amendment. They can and ignore it. that's what Reagan that. wants, a constitutional yeah, amendment. But that's a cop-out because... We have to ask, what, how, what were the number of vetoes that Ronald Reagan used during his term? You know, I, I did support Ronald Reagan in 1976, but you know, I sincerely believe I owe Gerald Ford an apology. Because Gerald Ford vetoed more bills percentage-wise than Ronald Reagan ever did. So Ronald Reagan now, did listen, not listen, really follow through. Do, Dr. Paul, listen, you know, and I know, and everybody knows that you know, and I know, <laughs> that the techniques of handling presidential obstructionism were devised by Tip O'Neill during the past 15 years to make it easy to get, easy to get around. What they'd simply do is amalgamate everything into one big bill. So there's a the president of the United States. He finds out he either vetoes this bill, in which, in which case uh, the zoos close in Washington and the animals die, oh uh, or, 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 or else you sign it. Now, he's also been asking for the item veto. When Ford was vetoing every other day of his life, he was getting bills for 50, 100, 200 million dollars, 300 million dollars. But that's not the kind of bills that they've been giving the President of the United States in the last uh, 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 congressional generation. They've been giving him two time bills, 500 billion dollars, 400 billion dollars, 200 billion dollars. Why didn't he ever do a uh, balanced budget? Don't you think that would have been a good idea for a conservative? I mean, we've believed this in for years, and no, that's no, wait, why wait, we're supporting 
The, the entitlements are outside his... Uh, Why are they outside? Well, he, he could ask for a repeal of that which caused the entitlement. That's quite true. See, I think... This... But, but he, I, I think correctly he was uh, elected president, above all, to, uh, well, uh, among other things, to restore uh, our uh, military resources, i.e. not to leave us as weak as we were in 1780. This he did. Now, the other was not done. There should, should be an allocation of responsibility. I agree with you in, in one of your statements. I was as disgusted as you were by his campaigning in 1960, in 1986, about all the farm subsidies he'd been responsible for. That, that was an unhappy day of his life. But there are unhappy days in most politicians. What about lives. Social Security in 84 when terrible, they, they terrible. did not qualify to get the raise and he raised them anyway? Terrible, you know, the, terrible, I mean, yeah, that, yeah. So that, that tells well, he was, about he the was sincerity of he the was, effort. No, 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 no. He was scared to death by David Stockman's enterprise in 1981 <laughs> when he floated without due caution uh, a su suggested revision of Social Security. And it was voted against by 99 to 1 in the Senate. Yeah. Well, that's a way of saying no. Uh, that, but, of course, uh, for four dependent. years he had a Republican Senate, so we can't rely on that. You know, I think it's interesting you bring up the subject of the line item veto. Prior to having gone to Washington, I thought that was a very good idea. Now that I've been there and left, I've decided it's a very bad idea. And, and the reason is because everything in Washington is political. Everything is leverage, and I believe it would be a political tool. So all we have to think about, even from a conservative viewpoint, is... What happens when you get uh, a Teddy Kennedy type president in and he uses the line item veto? That's one problem that the conservatives would have. The bigger problem, though, is everything is political. And that is, if you have something in, your, uh, in the budget for your district, it will be used as a leverage against you uh, for the line item veto. So I think it's enhancing the power. I don't, I wouldn't, I don't understand but, why a conservative who believes in small government, limited government, would want to give this overwhelming power to a president, well, which uh, might include a liberal president. <laughs> well, uh, uh, in, 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 the, in, the, in the first place, it is uh, a, a part of basically commendable constitutional architecture that you should pass a bill when you're talking about farmers that talk about farmers, not to talk about farmers uh, and also the Grand Canyon. Uh, uh, this amalgamation has simply been a way to defy orderly democratic uh, referendums on a particular measure. But uh, uh, if what you're saying is that that's the way politics necessarily is, I don't see how you can justify self-government. Well, this is why we want very limited government, because it is the nature of government. It's the nature of the well, human beings who I want, always I, abuse power. I want so that's why we want very yeah, little power in government. I want limited government also. Right. Uh, I, I've been wanting limited government for a long time. Uh, my, but my point is that uh, uh, the line item veto at least bears, uh, the, uh, 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 bears the maneuverings of the special interests so that you can stare him in the face. For instance, Kennedy's little maneuver a few weeks ago uh, at the expense of Mr. Murdoch, uh, was, as we all know, hidden in a $650 billion bill. Now, it's very hard to exhume an item like that and stare at it if it comes in wrapped in $650 billion worth of camouflage. You don't approve of that, do you? Certainly not. Well, then you no, do I have think line we need to do veto. all that. No, I don't want a line item veto, but I would think that a reasonable Congress, which we don't have, would be passing appropriation bills rather than uh, the way they're doing with these uh, continuing resolutions. I think that's atrocious. I, but I think it's, Shouldn't we reform that? But Yes, but th the only reform is philosophic and it's not a technical or a tactical change. The philosophic change has to be of the nature of government. This is a not an unusual uh, consequence. This is the natural consequence of government uh, that's in, run away in size and we have no control over it. But this is the natural consequence of all governments and the nature of man. So therefore, what we need is a body of law, which is the Constitution, to limit strictly the power of the politician to spend and to interfere in the economy, to interfere in our personal lives, to decide who yeah. should run the world. Well, so why don't you, if I may make an um, uh, arrogant suggestion, why don't you run on the Buckley Amendment? The, the Buckley Amendment, uh, which I proposed in a book published 15 years ago, was that um, no state whose uh, median income exceeds the national average to qualify for any welfare distribution from Washington. There's no point in take, taking money from New York, sending it to Washington where it spends, as I put it, an expensive night out on the town, and sending it back to New York. Now, if, you, if we want to worry about Mississippi, we should worry about Mississippi. 
But there's no point whatever in taking the 26 wealthy estates, taking money from them and sending it back. Now, this, I think, uh, has in it a, a certain philosophical cogency that could be made popular, and I hope you'd run with it. Well, uh, I think it would be an improvement, but I wouldn't run with it. <laughs> and the main reason is it's not the philosophic pro uh, concept that I want to endorse, because it really does endorse the role of government in welfare redistribution, so yeah, I want it, to yeah. reject that. It recognizes it. Yeah, yeah. It recognizes yeah. that, so again, yours is a technical or a tactical approach to a philosophic problem. Well, so it's tax reduction. <laughs> that's a tactical approach, but it can make the difference between no, flourishing in America uh, and in an America that's absolutely, uh, 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 whose energies are suppressed. See, I don't start with tax reduction because if you start with tax reduction and don't deal with the philosophy of government, there's, the taxes are high because we have to raise taxes to support the government doing the things we should be doing. So our concept is libertarianism. That is, we want a role for government. It should be uh, a compromise between anarchy and totalitarianism. That is, a minimal role of government to guarantee yours and my individual liberty, to leave the marketplace alone and to let other people alone, but to guarantee the security of this country. So. Uh, under those circumstances, you don't need a lot of taxes and you don't need to expand this government where you get to the point finally where we get the most conservative president ever and that we get a $220 billion deficit and we add 140,000 new people uh, into his bureaucracy. There's something seriously wrong with the philosophy. I could agree with you more. Let's submit to our uh, examiner, Professor Van den Hogg, as I've said, is the Olin Professor of Law and Public Policy at Fordham. He's the author of a great many books, most recently, The UN In or Out. He says out. He's a registered psychoanalyst, has taught law and sociology at the New School, at New York University, and elsewhere, Dr. Van den Hogg. I have a number of questions, but I want to make it clear that I am as much in favor of liberty as you are, and of small and limited government, etc. Our dif differences are in the details, so let me start with one detail. You said you're very much opposed to covert activities of the CIA, etc. Why? Because it's not a constitutional function for us to be involved in the internal affairs of other countries, picking and choosing uh, dictators. Well, suppose we can pick and choose dictators, it's not as easy as you make it, but suppose we can, and the choice is between a dictator favorable to American interests, willing to support us against the Soviet Union, and a dictator opposed to our interests and in favor of the Soviet Union. Don't you think it would be in the American interest to favor the first dictator? I think it's a contradiction to talk about a dictator who's a friend of America. America stands for uh, freedom and, in, uh, and individualism, and uh, dictators aren't, uh, aren't friends of freedom. So well, therefore, surely, I, we agree that he's a dictator. But nonetheless, a dictator may find that in foreign policy it is in his interest to uh, support our views and policies and not those of the Soviet Union. I, Surely you're aware of that. I, uh, say, I cannot say, see how they could, I think it would be a complete negative because it would put us on the defense of saying we're defending this dictator's particular policy and he has absolutely nothing to offer us. Well, we did that in the World War. I mean, we defended one dictator, uh, Stalin, against another dictator. Let me put it this way. If you were crossing a street and, and you were assailed by a group of gangsters and there's another group of gangsters fighting with the first group, wouldn't you be and willing to protect you, wouldn't be you be in favor of the second group of gangsters? Well, I'm going to do whatever I can to su survive, but I will never endorse the concept of uh, gangsterism or totalitarianism uh, I'm not or either. Uh, dictators. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, foreign policy is not a, like a tea party. You don't choose people that you like, whose domestic policies you favor. You choose those people who, for reasons of their own, are willing to support not your domestic, but your foreign policies. Well, I'm not sure. And if, by means of covert activities, say, you can uh, uh, institute or help institute or favor a government that is likely to support American interests, you'd be a dumb fool, frankly, not to do it. Well, I think then you have to defend the... It's cheaper, uh, too. You, well, let me well, point out, if we have in Nicaragua, say, a hard. government that is uh, uh, pro-American, well, so hard, hardly uh, one that's anti-American. If we do it by means of supporting the Contras, we certainly much cheaper than doing it by, say, an invasion or anything like it. Hardly is it cheaper when you think that Kennedy used his CIA to 
escalate the war.